Hello everyone, this is Rehan from Informatica. Today we'll be talking about LB Trace, which is uh, load balancer tracing on integration service. We'll have following agenda for this talk. Uh, we'll see briefly what is an LB Trace, how do we enable it, and uh, we'll take an example of LB Trace taken for integration service running in adaptive mode and in a multi node grid. So um, a, a load balancer basically is a master integration service which takes care of taking the incoming request for the tasks and dispatching it on the appropriate node in the grid. So based on the dispatch mode, uh, as we know, it, it dispatches the tasks in the grid. So that's like a different topic altogether. We'll talk about it some other day. So today we'll see how we can trace the activities of this load balancer. So LB trace gives us basically the activities of the load balancer from request submission for that task to which is which is to be dispatched until the task is completed with a success or a failure. And we'll take an example which will make things much clearer. So in just uh, mm, just to know how we can enable it, there's a custom flag on integration service uh properties in administrator console enable lb trace equal to yes then we can uh, once we set it and integration service will start tracing the load balancer activities the trace file is generated by default in server bin directory so now um what we can infer and understand from the lb trace so basically this tracing is purely for the debugging purpose or when we are testing out the um, uh, different dispatch modes available f like uh, we have round robin we have metric based and we have adaptive dispatch mode so each mode basically defines how a particular job or incoming requests for the job are dispatched into the grid ho how it is load balanced and LB trace it gives that gives us details of the activity like when a job is requested to be dispatched what was the job uh, requesting for how many CPU memories and some custom uh, requirement that job had etc etc that we can trace and and then it evaluates the nodes based on the dispatch mode and then on which node the task was dispatched so these things, these activities can be easily inferred from the LB trace. We will we'll take an exa we'll take a quick example and see what we infer from LB trace taken in an adaptive dispatch mode. We're taking adaptive dispatch mode because it involves more complexities and which it will cover the other dispatch modes as well. Okay, so we have an example here for a session task which is submitted to the load balancer. So in a load balancer trace or LB trace what we call it we see some events for a session task from submission to completion so let's see what we can infer from this and this LB trace was taken in adaptive mode so first it prints what is the task which is submitted to the load balancer and then what are the requirements for this task it says memory CPU and it has what the dispatch wait time this is, these are the configurations for the dispatch mode and the priority and then um, it will compute the memory available on that particular node or if it is required in whichever node in the grid say for example you have three nodes and it needs to calculate on whichever node it will calculate and that activity is also logged here and then it will log the you know available resources on the nodes in the grid so we select the best two nodes the best and the second best so here in this case these two the, these two lines these two log events rather give these details so it says node 1 is the best node to dispatch this node this particular task and node 3 is second best node to dispatch this task so this is done in the adaptive mode we print the best and the second best node so here if you see it says 
CPU some value and then again some value so this is with with the CPU profile and this is without the CPU profile and similarly you have something called a CPU fair share uh, which is with the profile and then you got something called for request column here for request prints the how much CPU is required for this particular task and how much it can scale given the CPU profile so it is with the CPU profile so uh, we will we'll quickly see what a CPU profile is in brief so to define CPU profile is it's it's like a benchmark computing capacity of a given node compared against a base so base details is like an architecture from where we compare uh, those details we can refer to the documentation and if higher the CP profile value which is one and above so it it is you know multiple times the CPU capa uh, capacity for that particular node so as we see here this value is higher than this one so which gives uh, that the CP profile for this particular node is higher and based on the CPU profile and the final values for the CPU availability available CPU and the for request the scalability for that task basically uh, the nodes available in the grid are ranked and the best two nodes are logged in the LB trace and and then it dispatches the session task on the node the, the best node that we got and, and then we have the regular stuff where we print the availability after the job was dispatched and then we see a notification that the process was started and then process success so this is very helpful when we have some issues or we see that one particular node in the grid is being loaded or load is not balanced etc so as we were talking about the CP profile I'll just give a brief idea so CPU profile basically is a benchmark as compared to a base performance capacity it is some Pentium some model and with the given clock speed and how much so that so that is taken as base and compared to that particular configuration what is the capacity of a given machine so if it is equal to the the base which we are which we the base capacity which we are which we are taking then the CPU profile value is one and then if it is higher then you know accordingly CPU profile is calculated you can calculate in ad it in administrator console a note CPU capacity is calculated as available CPU multiplied by the profile value and similarly for the CPU available for the request is also uh, you know considering the CPU profile value so in a grid if you have say three nodes and then out of the three two have same CPU profile and the third one has higher CPU profile then most of the jobs or you will see all the jobs getting dispatched to the, to the to the node which high with the higher CPU profile the reason being that node is always ranked as the best available node with respect to CPU given that the memory requirements are fulfilled so uh, you can try out the custom property as we have uh, given here enable LB trace equal to yes see what we observe in other dispatch modes like round robin uh, which is fairly simple wherein just uh, all the nodes in the grid are you know traversed one by one and then you have metric based wherein uh, you still go in the same fashion as uh, going one by one each node in the grid but you make sure that the memory requirements are also fulfilled so uh, th these things we can maybe take in detail in some other um, uh, session so if in case you have any questions or queries please do write your comments thank you so much